Hello and welcome to a new session of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Glamorous World. Today I'm joined here by uh, David Reyes. And hello, David. Hi, how are you? I'm good. <clears throat> Why don't you tell a little bit about yourself and more uh, specifically, how did you get to um, play or learn about GT? So my story with GT starts a couple of years ago. Um, I went to a conference in Florida uh, where Tudor was speaking. Um, and, you know, I attended his talks on, uh, at the time it was Moose and Humane Assessment. Uh, we've kept in touch over the last couple of years. I've been following what he and his company have been doing with Glamorous Toolkit uh, with some interest, uh, you know, even with the early days of Moose. Uh, I saw a lot of value in being able to look at software systems in a different way uh, rather than just looking at code, creating those uh, visual representations of what was going on. Uh, it was very helpful with where I was at the time and uh, the work I was doing. Um, and so I've been following for some time uh, this work and uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about it. Great. <clears throat> so the... This this the sessions here, right? Are usually about um, people wanting to play with Glamorous Toolkit and um, just asking questions, and then we'll see where it goes. So let's start by sharing the screen and with sure. some initial questions. <clears throat> okay. So what is Glamorous Toolkit for you? So over time, I think that's shifted a little bit. Uh, I think I originally thought of it as being kind of a, a fun, interesting, uh, essentially glorified notebook uh, where I you know, was playing around with different code and different <laughs> concepts. Uh, we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, or sorry, was it a couple of weeks ago? Uh, last week, actually. Uh, where uh, we had, uh, you know, we talked about uh, how Glamour's Toolkit is a little bit more than that. Uh, it's a way of thinking about the business uh, and making the, the concepts that are sort of embedded in the code and embedded in the system uh, uh, explainable by creating these different views uh, and sort of asking the right questions. Uh, we talked a little bit about your process at Pink and how uh, you go into uh, these businesses sort of at a disadvantage where you don't really understand uh, how the systems are put together or what their domain is. And then you, you use this tool to help you analyze it, help you understand it, help you explain how things are put together um, and use that to have very business driven conversations about uh, the company, the software, uh, what's going on and, and what needs to be what needs to be done. So I think the way that I'm thinking about it now is is less as a, a cool IDE uh, that has a lot of interesting features. And while it is still that, I think it's actually more of a uh, business uh, business knowledge management tool, uh, where part of that knowledge is the code itself, uh, and so you know, basically being able to to open something up, uh, ask different questions of it in, in different and creative ways, and then being able to to show those uh, and use them as as methods of communication, um, actually is the more interesting part now. Oh wow, that's quite a, quite a summary. Um... Yeah, I would. Uh, <laughs> um, would be hard to disagree with that. Um, okay, so let's look at something concrete. So, would you have some scenarios in mind that you would like to explore? Uh, so I'm happy to start with the the examples in the book. Uh, I'm also happy to. I think we had talked about you know you giving me a few scenarios that uh, we could start with, and then maybe moving on to exploring some of my own a little bit later. Um, yeah. You know, so whichever one feels good to you, I'm I'm up for. Well, let's go for let's go for the for the scenario with working with um with the REST API in in Glamour's Toolkit book. Okay, and that would be <clears throat> uh, this is a little bit more up um, in the in the use cases. 
the case studies um uh, there's a one, one which is called yeah that one okay so <clears throat> the scenario here is we have some rest api we don't know anything about it maybe there's has documentation maybe it doesn't have documentation um and we can you know see we still want to go and browse it basically and then by browsing it we also ideally would like to document what we have found um so the question is how to do that and the case study here is just uh, taking the public api of github and then, so if you go to that url there https uh, api github com orgs right the one that is here uh we get this result back so that's <clears throat> that's what we want right and then if you think about it like most of the time that's what this, this is this is the pretty much the experience of working with rest apis right you're just some url some tool to send that url and then you get back a json and then you look at the json and then you do something with it and so let's see what what we can do with it so one thing, so let, let's follow the, the tutorial here. So let's uh, go and inspect this URL. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, <clears throat> so now I have a URL. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to search, I'm going to go get that contents of that URL. So that Zinc client new get, that's a uh, Zinc client is a, is a, is a library class you would need to go and find that one but uh, let's suppose that we know about it right and then if i do get then i get a string right so this is an inspector here on the on the right and it's a the, the class is by string and then it has this string it shows me the preview okay good now strings are nice but um <laughs> maybe nice for transporting things um, it's not really what we want to go and you know manipulate on a, on a regular basis. So what we can do here, so let's say if I have now, but I know that this is a JSON, which means that I can go and use a parser. So I can go and just do that. Let's see. Let's evaluate the next one. So what happened on that? Or let, but let's just evaluate it locally. Yeah. Do you want to evaluate the next one? Sure. Yeah. So we're going to do this one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we have keys and values. So this is better now, right? It's not it's not like the previous one. But it's a little better than um, than the string, right? Even if the string would be highlighted, this is still better than that. Um, <clears throat> but then let's take it a step further because this is still a dictionary. Dictionaries are nice, but they're still generic data structures. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to do much about it. So they are nice, like as an intermediary form but not much more beyond that. So, so now but we can think of this like I have here an object, which is now I have a dictionary, but it represents, if I look at the URL, it represents one organization. So we can think of it of something like this, right? So I have an organization and I take that this dictionary and I put it into something like a raw data in it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's try to in, 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 inspect that. Okay, so could you tell me what you're seeing here? So this is actually interesting because rather than having just the uh, the raw view, what we yeah. actually have here in this inspector uh, is a list of the various repos that are associated with this organization. Uh, and then there's also, you know, there's still the raw data view that's available here, uh, sort of the, uh, the same dictionary that we were seeing before. Uh, but there's actually a list of events, so things that have been happening within this organization. Um, and then there are a few other views here as well. The meta view tells you a little bit about the object that we're working with. There's the print view, uh, I guess here, two string method. And then there's the actual repositories. Mm -hmm. So let's see, what would you expect to happen if you would maybe double click on one of these, for example? So no, knowing you, I think what's going to happen is that I'm going to see an interesting view of the repository. <laughs> let's see. And there it is. So so let's let's list. read let's read the whole thing. Let's read the whole pane. Sure. So I have one so, pane here, and then I have another pane here. So let, let's read mm -hmm. it. How would you read it? 
So on the left, we have a GitHub organization and I have a list of repositories. Now that I've double clicked into a repository, I actually have a representation, uh, a different object, which is a, a GitHub repo uh, or GH repo object. Uh, and I here I have- it from here. Right. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going and from then... top to, to bottom, right? This is where we're yes. reading it. Great. Pretty much, yeah. So usually it's left to right. What I tend to think of this as, you know, uh, when I'm drilling into objects, I'm drilling from from left to right. So I started <laughs> with the GitHub organization on the left. Uh, I've now found something that I found interesting. So I'm, I've double clicked it, which is open a new inspector, and then it is top to bottom. So uh, when I see this, I see the first thing I see is what kind of object am I dealing with, which is up here at the top. Uh, the second thing that I'm seeing is what are the views that are available for that object, the different uh, the different ways of seeing this object. Uh, and here I have, for instance, a list of events. I also have a list of contributors, uh, which may be a different interesting yeah, view of this object. Let's go there. Sure. And here we have here we have that list. Yeah, let's click on one of them. So what should we expect? Yeah, what do we expect? So this actually does something a little bit different than what I might expect, uh, but this is perhaps just a question of how the API is laid out. Uh, normally the way that I would, so what I do see here is a, a GitHub contributor, which makes perfect sense. Uh, what is interesting here is that, you know, I see all of the different objects. So there's the avatar. I can see the raw data. Uh, but this is one of the, the thing that I, and I, I ran through these examples a little earlier. The thing that I found interesting about this is that I see the list of contributions to the various different repositories. Uh, and again, I think this is how the GitHub API is laid out, but I actually see your contributions to different repositories within the org. Uh, and perhaps, I don't know if this is even limited to just the org. Uh, I think I might've expected to see just the ones that are associated with the repo that we were just in. And that's the thing, right? Because the thing about this is that that's an interesting assumption, right? And this is why it's important to read um, the UI so that we can um, make the assumptions more explicit. Mm -hmm. So this object here has no necessarily relationship with the object mm -hmm. on the left. Here, yeah. I just took some object and I just wanted to see it on the right. And that's it. Um, so which means that this is not a, what we are seeing here, this is not a tool. Well, it is a tool, but it's actually just a, a concatenation of smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. And they might or might not have, uh, you know, take into account the context um, from that, that it comes from, right? So here we're looking at the, at the GitHub repository called GToolkit, and here we see multiple repositories. Right, mm -hmm. but from the perspective of the of the contributor, this is a perspective that we want to take into account because I want to see mm -hmm. if if it's only the contributor that I'm inspecting. Um, I don't have this is not a no it's not a it's not a contributor within a repository. It's a contributor in general. Yeah, and from a contributor in general, I want to see what else is that uh, contributor doing which is yeah. different than from the expectation of saying, I want to see this contributor within this repository, which is still a valid, it's perfectly valid as a, as a goal, but it is a different, it would be a different view. Mm -hmm. And this, this, this then leads us to the, um, to the flow. Very often we are used to, um, or people are used to going to a tool and then finding out what you can do with it. In our case, we want the we want to inverse the flow. We say, "What do I want to do?" And then I'm going to pick a view. So even if something appears here as default, that's not necessarily what what will drive me. I might take a look at it. Just I make I might take a look at the different specific views, but that's just because um, just because I want to I want to take a look at it. Just to to see if if I want to, for example, inspect or learn about this object, it's an interesting uh, it's it's an interesting uh, source. Um, but other than that, I will not necessarily just look here and then stay here. Rather, I'll turn it around. I will say, I want I want to achieve something, and then I'm going to say, what is the most interesting view? What is the most interesting tool? 
uh, that helps me helps me get there. Okay. Now, yep. what I propose as an exercise is to actually redo a little part of this one. Uh, but basically, going just from that dictionary that we had at the beginning in the in the Lepiter page. Okay, let me go back to it for just a second. Okay, so we can just uh, we can just go from here and start a new snippet. Okay. Uh, if you if you go here and then you do a command enter, you can do that, or you can just. Go at the end and do command enter. Command enter. It's not, not cooperating. Here we go. There it is. Okay. And now All instead right. of GH organization, which already exists, let's do another one. Okay. My organization or tutorial or something. Okay. <clears throat> My organization. Okay. And I'm going to do new and then do the raw data thing as well. I get it from the same dictionary. Yeah. Okay. So now obviously it that class doesn't exist. Yeah. So we should go and create it. Okay. And the way we create it is there's a wrench tool there. I can say create. And now we have a dialog that just popped in so you're in your notebook, and now a dialog to create the class popped out there. You can say the super class is object. We have to now double click on the package and give it a name. Okay, enter. And now just press so just press the OK bar button there. Okay, now you have created your class. Now, here we can say, okay, raw data doesn't exist apparently. Yep. So, we Same can thing. Know. Yeah. And now I get an editor for that, um, for that, uh, for that method. And now, what we've done before, uh, if you look in, there's this. Um, uh, expander that appears in place so you can peek into you know some something that if, if you want to so basically yeah. here the implementation here was just that we are creating a raw data um, instance variable or slot and then we're just putting the dictionary into that raw data and this is a general pattern that we use every time we, we're reverse engineering data some doesn't matter where the data comes from right whether this is an api or this is some data in some format locally, we very often find ourselves um, taking the um, taking some whatever the raw data is, put it into an into an object, a first class entity, and then let just create methods that extracts uh, information uh, out of that raw data um, from the perspective from the higher level. And then once we know what we actually are interested in in the data, then afterwards we might come back and put only interesting bits of information. But for the time being, it's perfectly reasonable just to have the raw data around. So we can just store it in that dictionary. We can just store that dictionary into the raw data. <clears throat> yeah, and now, of course, you don't have that. And escape would work, yeah. Yeah, uh, not not. You want a a slot. Yeah. Okay. Now you should still save. So you see the yellow bar here. Yeah. Okay. So now we can collapse this. And now we can inspect. Okay. So what do we have? So we have here is just an organization that at this point contains only the raw data variable. It doesn't have any interesting views or anything uh, that we saw in a previous organization, but we do have a new object that we can start to work with. Yeah. So one way to do things here would be um, maybe we want to take a look at the raw data and see how do we find, for example, repositories. 
So what do we do? It's a simple, it's a question, right? The question is, I want to know what kind of things do I have in the raw data? Let's unpack that one a little bit. So the thing that I started doing here was to actually just dig through the different layers of variables, trying to find the raw data. Yes. I suspect and there's a better a, way. That's, a, that's the perfectly reasonable thing to do if this is the only tool you have at your disposal, right? If the only tool you have at your disposal, then yes, you will. that will look like an, an inspector that has variables and values, right? And the only thing you will do is you'll just dig through that tree of uh, of dependencies. And so now let's uh, just a second. So now let's do another alternative, an alternative here. So double click on raw data instead of instead of diving through the double click on this raw data over here on on the right. Here, yeah. So now what happened here is that I we get back um, a dictionary and. In that dictionary, we have now the keys and values. So it's much easier to read like that. Mm -hmm. Right? OK, so let's go through these ones and see what we find here. So much as before, uh, we've now gotten to the point where we have just the string uh with some mostly indecipherable things inside of it yes uh then we also have uh but we actually have actually some more interesting and richer information here so we can see you know that you have this organization or this dictionary has a key for has repository projects tells us a little bit about the location tells us about the repo urls uh, and I suspect just as we previously pulled this information, uh, we can probably take a look at uh, any one of these API endpoints uh, and get different views of this, this organization. Let's try. I think that's a reasonable thing to try. So let's try okay. that. So let me uh, come back here for a moment and we'll, we're going to go ahead and add another one of these. Let me undo what I accidentally did here. And then let's create. No, 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 no. Let's stay. Let's go back into the inspector and stay in the inspector, please, for the okay. time being. Sure. So we have that, right? And we have raw data. We still don't know what the key is. Mm -hmm. Let's say we were interested in the repos, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we have a list of well, we have the public repos here, or account of the public repos, but there is a repos URL. Okay. So now let's take from here a the on the a playground, which is okay. an object specific playground. And then in there we can say you can he here you have access to, to this object, to the object on the left, right? So we can say raw data. Mm -hmm. And now you can say at and now we have a, a quote repos underscore URL. That's the key. Yep. But it should be in the quote, right? Because it's a string. Yep, it is. Uh, okay. So if you do we now can... Command G, we have to, to try it. Yeah, and then we have those string. Mm -hmm. And maybe this view is better. Okay, great. So we can put this one in a URL uh, slot or local variable. Okay. So let me go ahead and... Just at the Oops. beginning, we can say URL and assign it where. Yep. And what we're going to do here, uh, do we go here, URL, assign data? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Now, what did we say? We say, given some URL, we want to go and see whether this URL would work as an endpoint. We still don't yes. know that. 
Excellent. So let's go here to the left because it seems like a deja vu, basically. Right? We used to have a URL over here and then we did something with it. Yep. And so here we, we have, can... We, we can just copy it. Uh, yeah. So we do have this client that is able to get the URL and put it into this new slot, which is the JSON string. Uh, we do need to bring in this library somehow. No, we need to put a dot. Ah, uh, thank you. Okay, now give it a shot. Then we want to see. Do that an inspector. Yep, there it is. <clears throat> so much yeah. as before. No, we, we don't have to go forward than that. It's here in the string. It's okay. Yeah. Right. So we see this. And now what else? Do, what do we do with this? Now I have a string. We don't like strings. So what is next? So we previously did was parse it. Uh, and there's an example for how to yes. do that back here. Yeah. So let's go ahead and copy that as well. And but I would no, but just a second. Can you put mm -hmm. this one in a different you see you've already spent it would took a bit of time to um so if you go here and you do press command enter, it will split the so yep, I can do that. Give me a moment. No, you okay, you can split it. You can split a, a snippet by just doing command enter somewhere in the middle of it. Okay. So here we have This is this the snippet that we were looking for? Yes. So the thing is, this one took a bit of time to execute. So mm -hmm. we know that this one works. We just want to play with the second one. So this is why we can create another snippet, and then we have another unit of execution, which is okay. simpler to manipulate. So now Command G and see what happens. <clears throat> so there we go. What do we get? So we once again have a list of dictionaries, each of them with 80 keys. Uh, it tells us a little bit about the, it looks like 30 repos that are in this uh, in this uh, organization. It's 30 because or, uh, it's, it's, sorry, uh, this, 29. it's the limit. Yeah. And no, it's 30 because it's the limit. Uh, ah, it's okay. just uh, the rate limit uh, with, without, uh, without the development key. An API key. So okay. right, but we have the array, right? So this is an array, it's not a dictionary, which means that maybe we should uh rename that. <clears throat> um should I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Usually we, we use a camel case instead of uh, uh underscore. Yep. I am I apologize, I've been in Python land for too long. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have that. Now, an interesting thing here actually would be now we can merge the two together. Because this is a nice thing. This is, if you think about it, this whole logic here would actually be a nice predicate or something to ask my organization, give me the repos array. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be? It would. So, it would. I... so let's let's put this one here. Uh, so if you go here at the beginning and press backspace, so from the beginning of of this snippet, string? and you can merge oh. the no the snippet, yeah. and you can merge the two snippets. Got it. Present in there. Okay, now let's you can you can command A so to select everything. And now, if you right click, there is this thing which is called extract method. So you want to extract it in self not in any other uh, variable. And then we can give it a repos array, for example. Enter and enter. This is the preview of the refactoring. And now you have that, right? So if you expand okay. that, you will see that there's a, a method in my organization. So the way I read this one, in this package, GH tutorial, there is a class my organization, which has repos array with this implementation. And you can also find it here in Meta. Right? It appeared there. 
Okay, so now what we could do is one thing we could do is just create um we could go ahead and create this list that we see on the on the right and we can put it right directly here. Okay. And how do so we do to that? This end, to this end, we will create a view. Now, what is a view? So a view would just be a different way of looking at this organization. <laughs> Yes, um, but let's see how a view is implemented. So, for example, let's take the simple one, which is this one, print. Mm -hmm. Can you could you just do an alt click there, or option click? There it is. So, what happened here? What do you think happened here? So it looks like we actually went into the inspector itself and started looking a little bit at its implementation. So here we have a we have a what looks like a a view uh, a a view object uh, that is a GT view that has a few different attributes associated with it. Okay, so this one here is an annotation. Mm -hmm. What we read this is a this is one single method, and the way we read it is in this package, in this class, there is this method with this signature. And it has this annotation over here and then the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. Okay, which means so I have in object, there is a method called print gt print for, and this one will create a text editor. Okay. So <clears throat> the reason that's interesting is be that in fact this is not a separate object. Or it's not we're not creating a separate thing. It's just a method in the class of the object that we are actually interested in viewing. Interesting. So it is right. So this exists inside of, uh, in this case, my organization. It, it exists inside of object, right? Which is the root inside of all of classes. Okay. And because it's inherited from everything else, then it will this print view will appear in all other in all objects of all other classes. Okay, so that, that's what I thought, but I, I was a little confused. Thank you for clarifying. Right, so now if we basically means, if we want to create a, um, if we want to create a view, we have to go on the meta side, on the meta mm -hmm. of our object or of our, yeah, in the meta view of our object. And then we're gonna create a new class, a new method here. So this button here. Okay. One second, it's uh, not working right now. It's I'm trying responding. to click it, it is not working. No, it's not responding. Okay, can you just maybe scroll back and forth? Sometimes with Zoom together, it has issues. There it is. Okay, okay. so let's just, let's let's call it a GT. Um, it's or, not sorry, GT. Print, right? It's going to be repos. No, it's not. Repos for, and then you. This is just a, a notation. So now comes a column, so that we can introduce an argument. There's going to be a view, and mm -hmm. then uh, let's just press Command Save for now. Command S, yeah, and we can continue editing there. Okay. So here, yeah, so we can remove the. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna create a GT view annotation. That's uh, with an angle brackets. Yep. Yeah, um, we can remove that, and then it's it will return a view, and now it comes a list here because we just want to see a list. Uh, it's a small L. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, and then we want to give it a title. So let's give it a title. Um, uh, repos. Yeah. And then we have semicolon that's cascading, right? So I'm going to send multiple messages to the same receiver. Uh, priority, we can, but we don't have to. We just say uh, items. So at least basically, what, what's the, th the thing that we need to do to parameterize? So for items? Yeah, we have uh, to do the items, right? And then the items yeah. is going to be now, they are going to be defined in the Lambda, in a block. Yeah. So we're going to put a block there. Sorry. Yeah. And where would the items be? 
So the items would be in the, uh, we'd actually be getting them, I think, from Repos Array. Yeah, exactly. And of course, that's going to be a message sent and it needs to send to something. So how to, remind me again how that syntax looks like. like so. Yeah. So you want to send it to self. Got it. You're okay. already in the object, right? It's Yep. And that's it. That's it. Now save. Okay. And there's a refresh issue here, but let's go back one step and either do that or click on this button again to, to respawn that thing. And boom, our view is here. Great. And here's our list. Here's our list. So, um, right, and that, that's basically it. Now, how would we do it? What would we do now to, to achieve the other thing where we, when I double clicked on one of the items, first of all, the items look better, but when I double, when I inspected one of the items, I got the repos on the other, a repo on the other side. Mm-hmm. So how I would mean, we in this case we need to tell it what this list of objects is and how it displays? We mm -hmm. uh, we we gave it the list of objects. Yes. Right? So it That's has our list, list of... array. Yeah. And so we have a list of objects here. Each of these is, I think if we double click into it, you'll see that it's a dictionary uh, with all of the necessary items and keys. But what mm -hmm. we didn't tell this is, you know, how to display this in any other form than essentially a, a string representation of that dictionary. Right. Now, the thing is that, so if we go back to here in, the, in our meta view, mm -hmm. so we could we can do their repos array, but we could also have another method which maybe gives us repos, like a list of, of the our repositories, or we can go and change the repos array Instead of having that raw thing, they actually mm -hmm. give us um, a list of our, of my repo. So then let's go in here. Uh, Is that just, method? Maybe let's go and modify this one. Sorry, rename maybe. it. Okay. Not only rename it, but so... the question is, how do we how do we go from this generic thing and now we should create something that is my repos? Okay, so in this case, if we're looking at my repos, I think we'd probably need to create a different class that represents that. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. So, and then what would we do for each of these results? So we need to iterate through uh, through the list of dictionaries and basically convert one of those, uh, each of those into a class. Or exactly. So a, let's, let's not look that class. Right, so let's, let's not necessarily look that one up and you can just put the parentheses in and say collect. Okay. Collect. And then. Uh, it's a column and it gets a block. Like so? Mm -hmm. You have, then you get uh, each. So you have an, an argument and the argument is introduced with the column. Uh, okay. You can think of, the way I think of blocks is, is you can right there, but also we can think of them like anonymous functions. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you have a keyword message in Smalltalk, uh, then you usually you have the name and then you have the column afterwards. So okay. if you if you think about uh, not having a name, then the only thing that remains is a column. Right. So, so what we could do is you can just say call you have a colon, and then it comes each and then I see what you mean. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And now comes a pipe. Uh, this is how we distinguish the two parts. Okay. And then there, right? Now I have one item in there, right? Mm -hmm. One of these dictionaries. Now, what would I do? What would be an interesting thing to do if I have that dictionary? I said that I want to collect and I want to now create my repo somehow. Yeah. So, so then just that? just as before, we might probably do something like my repo new. 
Uh, and then we're going to have to come in here and create that class. Uh, uh, you have to click on it again. And then... Now you have to click on it again. It didn't create it yet. Ah, uh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It, it populated everything, but you have to oh. say yep. okay. Okay. And, and then... now... So then what we would probably do is, well, this is currently just an empty class that has nothing interesting going on inside of it. So we probably want to do something with the data that we're getting uh, in e in this each object. Uh, what do you what do might here? Be... So here we basically assigned the, uh, the dictionary, the, the raw data to the dictionary. We can do the same thing with this object. Yep. So. Let's come in here and no, you can you can do. collapse it because now you're in the you're editing the class. I'm already okay. in the editor. But you want okay. to do it in the out, you're outside of it, and now you just say how you want to use the class. Okay. So you can say so, raw data. Hold on, it's not copying. One moment. And take this. And then raw data. First dictionary. Before. Okay. Uh, sorry, one moment. So just as before, the dictionary yeah. it's called raw data. And then here we come in here. And um, then okay. this is mm. not what we're looking for. No, but the, with, where's the dictionary coming from? So the dictionary is, is that each object. So yeah. we just need to change that. There we yes. go. Okay, now we still, we're not setting into my repo. Actually, you know okay. what? Here, this is a unary method here, isn't it? It's a unary method, so it doesn't have an argument. It is. Okay, so, so we if you could... save it, notice how, because it is a unary method, notice how there's this button right in the method. Yes. Because this is not a, even if it's on the instance side, right? But because I now have self, I'm inside the inspector, mm -hmm. I can go and evaluate. So let's try, see what happens. Okay. So let's look at the items. I have an array of 30 items. I have my repo, what's inside there. Let's look at the raw, because we don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. And here we just have. Didn't we expect something here? We should have been getting a raw data. OK, let's see. Why, why not? Which... Maybe we expand that, because that's just a seller. Okay, and then here, uh, that's because we don't actually have a slot for it. We didn't assign anything to anything. It's just an empty yeah. method. So you don't have to. Have... You can edit in the. You can edit it indeed in the in the class, but in this case, I wouldn't. I would collapse this. Okay. And I would just edit it here, right? This is the method, the raw data that you just expanded in place. Yep, and just as before, uh, I think the way that this would work would be... You can say raw data, and then assign it. So uh, it's col to... colon equal. Yep, colon equal to, and here we create dictionary. a slot, and then it's two dictionary. Okay. Yeah. And we'll save that. We go back here. Let me refresh this object. Uh, items. One repo. And we have the raw data that was missing before. Although it's currently new. set to, it's still set to nil. So what did I miss? Uh, coming back to, let me just open this example. So I customly refer to, that looks correct. It is correct. It's interesting that it's not. Uh, can you ex ex uh, inspect this again? Sure. And we're going to do this again. OK. I think you didn't I, expect. I think you inspected. I, I, I forgot to. Yeah, I, I just hit the refresh in the middle. I did not hit the reinspect. Yeah. And that means that the, the value 
the value of the object that is stored in this thing is the last evaluation. What you okay. have done was you had the array with your my repos, but then you have created an instance variable mm -hmm. slot. That slot was added to all objects of that class. Yep. So what you have saw there was that the uninitialized objects, yes. Okay, yeah, so now I have is, my repo. Yeah, we have the repo. And that actually, that behavior is interesting in and of itself because that's, uh, it looks like the behavior, the, the instance variable is being added to even an instance that we had already created. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then the other thing here is now, let's say, for example, we want the, in our repositories now, we have not only, um, Let's go into our in our view now. In mm -hmm. in my organization, let's look at the, our repos view. Okay, so let me go back my organization repos. It's rendered it. Now I have my repo, but this is not so nice, right? It would be nice to maybe have the name of yes, the repo. Yes, that would be. For example, so let's go and do that. So how would we do that? Who should so, know the name of the repository? So the reposit the, the repository should know its name should know its name. So let's see, if I select now a repository. Okay, so we have, let me yeah, from one here, here. Yeah, select one. I get my repository, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, where is that name? So Where that name it is, from? it's buried in the raw data here. Excellent, but it's in the raw data, which means that now maybe the raw view is, is more interesting because I don't have anything else here. Yeah, and so yeah, I and could here do, what we I have could is... Do, so yes, I could do that by just uh, expanding trees like I'm used in any other tool. <laughs> um, uh, in, in any Rita, how you feel about there, that? But, but, uh, but in this, in our, in our world, we just let's double click on this one because maybe it comes with you know dedicated views. They're easier. And you're right, navigate. it does. Uh, indeed, it does. So here we have a list of keys, okay. yes. which very easily allows us to find what the right key is. Uh, so we have and full name, we, for example. We have a full name key. So just to confirm, what I can do is come down here and see full name. And then we see it's the name with the uh, with the organization in front of it. So yeah. if this is what we find interesting, we can certainly use it. And so okay. what we now need to do, I imagine, is to create a new method here. We can. But the other uh, alternative is to to start from an object playground because now you want to have a conversation right with yes. your object. So we have a self here, and now I can say, "How would I get the full name out of the so, row?" So self data. Uh, mm -hmm. So actually, I'd say from raw data, isn't it? No, it's just just or so. So this is a setter, right? In this case, right? It's a raw data that gets an argument. What mm -hmm. we want now is we want a getter, but we don't have a getter. There's no method, but I'm inside that class, which means that I can directly access the, the variable if I want to. So I can, if I say okay, so raw data here. One moment. So there's a raw data available to me. Yeah. And then I can do here at full name. And this is going to be a string. And it's an at, and then it comes, it's a it's a keyword message, which means it, it needs a colon after it. Okay, there we go. And so let me quickly inspect that. And then we see the string just as we expected. Okay, and now I like that, right? Now you want mm -hmm. to promote this one to a method. Okay, or and the way we call it extract to a yep. method. And the way we do that is control A, Right click, extract method, and we're going to give it a name. Uh, Full name. And we're going to go ahead and click that. And now it's available to us. We can see the implementation. Yep. So I have that. And so now I can go back to my view. We go here. You can, you can also click on one of these here on top. Okay. And then we but have. Yes. And now one, one way to do it would be 
if you if you alt click on this repos thing mm -hmm. yeah then you get this and you go to the source here because you basically here you're inspecting the you're inspecting the method just one method right that implements yep. this view so yes. we can put here a semicolon here and we can also specify here item text item text yeah and then now you will get a block with one argument so for each of these okay and so we and have this is, it's an anonymous function you need a keyword so you need a column and then we need and then each and now you have a pipe and then so this is the do. definition right and now mm -hmm. you can say you want the full name from each. Okay, let's save. Sure. No, it was good. Yeah. No, without so colon is when you're sent is is in a message. Each is mm -hmm. is an object, is the Got receiver. It. So if you save and it, so, and it'll refresh. Beautiful. And now you have this. So let's take a step back and see what did we do here. So a couple things. Um, we started by getting a bunch of JSON from the uh, from the GitHub API. Um, we created two objects that we found interesting. So a my organization object uh, and a my repo object, uh, which were folds of, of the objects that you already had before, but just basically starting from scratch. Um, we took that JSON and first parsed the organization JSON into uh, something that we found useful uh, and put it into my organization. So in this case, that was a view of the repos that are associated uh, with this uh, with this organization. Um, and then we created a custom view that allows us to see that. Um, and now we also have the ability to drill down and see a view of the repo, uh, which, uh, and we have the ability to do that by uh, you know, the repos uh, get their raw data, they expose a full name object so that we can easily work with it. Uh, we don't have just a raw dictionary that we're staring at when we're doing this. Yeah. And now, but the other, the other thing to keep in mind here is that how we created these classes and methods and because everything, so this is a, a we're in a reverse engineering scenario here. We don't exactly mm -hmm. know what we have. We also are in a way we don't exactly know how our model is going to look like, so we want to yeah. let it emerge, and we let the navigation um, help us and guide us to actually what kind of entities are interesting to be added, which means um, that's why we we talk here about in um, um, we we talk about a, an incentive that is orthogonal to the functional need. It's not a function. We didn't really implement functions here. We didn't really mm -hmm. implement. Uh, we didn't start from saying, I want to do this with the GitHub API. We just said, I want to browse my GitHub API just to see what do I have in there. Um, yeah. in, and in the process, I'm going to document what I learned about it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not really a TDD flow, right? It's not a test-driven development flow. It's, it's a different flow. It, it's much more explorational, right? And then the the thing that we've seen here is that we actually never opened the static code browser. We haven't yeah. worked in a in a browser where we didn't have data. All programming here was ha or happened directly in the presence of the data, right? And I was creating everything. We pretty much brought the whole development experience into the repo, if you want. Mm -hmm. right? Everything we and did then, was sorry, I apologize. Uh, it, it felt like everything we did was in context. Uh, we we yeah. weren't just staring at code without the context. We, in any case, where we were actually implementing anything, uh, we were typically mm -hmm. doing it in the context of the object we were working with. Right, and the the other thing to um, to remember here or to to notice maybe here is that actually there weren't that there weren't that many distinct patterns, right? So. The the whole exploration was take the string, parse the string, 
create a first class entity around it. And then once you have the first class entity around it, then explore it a little bit, what kind of what's what's in the raw data? What do I get from here? And once I know what do I get from here, create some or prototype a little bit, what where else can I go? Once I prototype that one, promote it to a method. Once I do that, I create a view. Once I have the view, I can navigate to that place. And then of course I'm gonna start again because that place is gonna be a dictionary and it's gonna be wrapped in another entity. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That, that, well, that's the whole thing. Well, and what's also very interesting about this is you mentioned the concept of documenting as you go along. And to some extent, that's exactly what we were doing. As we were creating these classes, we were creating a form of documentation. We were forming these uh, these objects uh, that map directly to the API that we were trying to you know, reverse engineer, if you will. Uh, and so now we have containers for all of the, the things we find interesting about that API. Yes. So... Actually, now that we're talking about the documentation, let's. I'm. I propose that maybe we can spend a bit more, a few minutes, to just to go to the GH organization and see how that one is implemented. Sure. So, for example, a, a question here would be: How do I go from a repo to contributors? So, in here, you have. A list of GitHub repos. Okay, let's stop, please. Okay. Because it's 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 it is a valid way to do it, right? This is a valid, it's not an invalid uh option to go and read code. But yes, there is a, a much more interesting, it's it's and there's a more interesting way that gets us to, to more specifically to what, which code we need to go and read. And so, so and in that view, let me Go in here. I would collapse the static. This one is a static view, right? This GH okay. organization, that's that's a static browser of the class. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything. So let's go and inspect this result, the, the snippet, to get okay, the so a, a specific my organization, a GH organization object. Okay. So I have now repositories here, mm -hmm. right? And then I click on one repository because I saw that if I click on one of those, I get this, and now I see, oh, look at that. There are contributors there. Yes. And so I'm going to no we... we We go to contributors. We look at yeah. them. And so say, how is this implemented? And how do we and know so... how the view is implemented? So we can do that. And I'm going to alt click there. No, of course, it's a method. Of course, if you know a little bit, you know that this is GT contributors uh, for, it's going to be something GT for in somewhere in this class, obviously. Yeah. Um, right. But it's still it still is interesting to um to see like just doing this alt click, just quickly go into that context, see what exactly do I have there. Now there's a bit more to do here. So let's actually uh there's a bit more context here, which means you see here I have a view which is of a different kind. It's called explicit. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's because it's not just a plain list, as you can see. It's just it has like some pictures, it has some text, it has some I don't know what. So it has a little bit more than just uh, um, a plain thing. Uh, it's just just a, a plain a list like I had before. So I have to specify a bit more. Mm -hmm. But the actual interesting thing is here, right? I can see that I have a stencil here indeed, but then. Uh, I have this self contributor. So, what exactly is self contributors? So, so we can expand that one now. Because yeah. now I actually I have the information I was interested in. Oh, mm -hmm. and now look at this. It says I have some utility method here. I can see self and then create from apparently one of these URL that we have seen before. Mm -hmm. um, then I say probably looks like some sort of a block that takes some sort of data and then here this contributors thing specified what it wanted and probably what happens if there is an error so mm -hmm. maybe let's actually go and use in let's go and dive into that uh specific thing so this okay. is where we start to see the, the zinc client yep so we've basically done exactly the same thing that we've done um in the previous one but wrapped in a little bit of a utility Mm -hmm. Right, and then we notice how this utility is actually something called a GH entity. Now, what exactly is this GH entity? What would that be? 
So geotensity, I imagine, is uh, a reusable block to to call any kind of GitHub. Uh, GitHub so entity. This is so a, in this case, this is a this is a class. Yeah. This is also a class. Now, if yep. I can do from cell from here, I go here. Either one one must be a subclass of the other. Well, no, and that's what I think. It... I think GH entity is the, the super class of the GH repo. Right. So let's actually now just to confirm that one, go here and click on this, this GH repo. Okay. And and now is. you're navigating. Yeah, there it is, right? That's the super class. So basically what happened here is that we went from the dynamic place where we've seen something. And now we essentially hear what you have here. This is, um, you can think of it like a legend, right? The legend of the visualization is that piece of code. And from there, you will cherry pick what is in, what is sometimes what is interesting. Because sometimes it's actually not this part that is interesting. Sometimes the how the layout happens. Because I just want mm -hmm. a, view, a view exactly like that that I'm interested in. Right? And then I will be looking for something else. Here, I wanted to see how do I go from my repo or repo to uh, my my uh, to contributors of this repository. Right? And then uh, and then I'm looking at, at things here. So, and, and that's basically, that's the, the documentation part, right? That view can have, it serves different purposes. It served a purpose for us while we explored. It was easier for us to just explore like that mm -hmm. and make sense of things gradually. But it's also interesting from a reverse engineering perspective. Every time I see multiple views defined on an object, I really, it's, it's like an interesting source of just learning a little bit about what other questions other people had about this little context that I'm looking at, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the documentation side um, of it. Now notice how they, they kind of reinforce each other. So we never have, mm -hmm. oh, let's document things now, um, part of the process. I mean, ideally we just have incentives that push me towards creating, um, the the thing that that um, maybe help other people also explain what I have seen. Well, and I think what's uh, yeah, and it, it's it's encoded right in there. So because we have uh, these different views that are being created for each one of these objects, uh, like you said, it, I can see the list of questions that people have been asking because they're essentially encoded in the object itself. Uh, and if I I have a, it, it lets me look at things in a different way so for instance uh let's say that i wanted a you know uh something else like for instance i wanted to see what the last uh action of any one of these contributors was to a given repository uh i can take this and reuse it and make my own slightly different version of that view uh yes you know basically building on the questions that people have already asked it's effectively a scientific method yeah it is that's pretty much it. So yeah, that's that's the that's the thing that uh, you know that, that's just like the scope of the of the exercise. And this you can apply this one to any any API, in fact. Mm -hmm. And it will pretty much look exactly the same. Yeah. So um, questions so far. Uh, this has actually all been very clear. Uh, there's. You know, once I understood the pattern, and I think I, I need to reinforce the, uh, you know, my natural tendency, given where I come from, is to want to dig into the code and dig through the levels of the code and figure out how it's, uh, how it's all put together. I think this is one of those cases where it'll take practice to be able to understand, uh, you know, or rather it'll take practice and, and a deliberate effort to avoid doing that and use the context that's available here to actually uh, navigate these objects as opposed to doing it uh, the way that I'm used to. Uh, but this doesn't leave a lot of room for ambiguity. Uh, it's very straightforward. It's very easy. Uh, you know, once you start thinking about it the right way, uh, there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of questions to ask. Uh, it's relatively simple. Mm-hmm. So that's it's an interesting thing you you noticed here about the um, um about the difficulty right because we noticed a couple of times 
but we just dive directly into whatever the tool afforded right now, right? Mm -hmm. And then whatever was was um um available. Either was that was it either that it was code or that it was the raw view in the inspector. Mm -hmm. So now this is the, the hardest part of this whole multiple um development process, right? So the there is a step in between having a question and choosing the tool that is most of the time implicit. And it is implicit because mm -hmm. there was no option until now. Yeah. Uh, there was only if whatever you had in front of you, and that was it. Right. And yep. now we have the option of saying, oh, let's actually choose what is the interesting experiment uh, to create here. And we should do, we want to do this for every single question we have like yeah. every one of every one of them and that's where it's hard the hard part is actually not building the tool not the technological side those are uh, easily uh, learnable but the difficult part is actually start formulating the questions and then afterwards also stopping uh, in between uh, formulating the question and actually interacting with the tool So uh, that takes a sec like a second step because, like you said, it's implicit. Uh, if you have a tool right in front of you, you you tend to, in most uh, most software engineering tools, you tend to use what you have uh, because, like you said, there is no other option. Uh, and here, there is another option, and you have to take that half step back and go, you know, what is the question that I'm trying to answer? Uh, and what is the best way for me to answer that question? It requires you to uh, basically introduce a step that you normally short circuit uh, just because normally you're using the tools you have. Yep. That is pretty much it. Great. Then uh, I think we can then wrap up for today, unless you have open issues so far. Uh, no, I think I'm going to be taking this back and trying to play with it a little bit more and uh, try to do a little bit of that same, uh, a little more of that practice uh, of, you know, looking at something, uh, taking a step back uh, and thinking about how I actually want to see the objects rather than just trying to use what I have. Um, and then hopefully I'm, I feel a little bit more comfortable with that process the next time around. Okay, okay. Then uh, thank you very much and until next time. Sounds good. Thank you.